Hello, NASDAQ followers, and welcome to another episode of Behind the Bell. I'm your producer and host, Leanne Alfaro. Joining me right now is J2 Global CEO, Vivek Shaw. Vivek, thank you so much for joining us. It's great to be here. You are celebrating today, to date, 20 years of listing um, as a public company. So congratulations thank to the you company. Thank you very much. And tell us, start by telling us a little bit about your history with J2 Global. Yeah, so a little bit about J2. So mm -hmm. we're an internet information and services company. We operate a portfolio of a little over 40 brands. Half of the brands are content brands supported by advertising, brands like Mashable, uh, IGN, Everyday Health. And the other half of the portfolio are communications and marketing and security services supported by subscriptions. So we own Viper, we own eFax, we own Line 2, uh, we own iContact. So we've got 27, 2800 employees around the world in 50 locations. Kind of the common thread across our portfolio is we're helping our audiences, our customers navigate the shift from analog to digital. That is sort of the, that is the uh, nucleus of what we do uh, as a company. And truly a global company. Yeah. As you said, 2800 employees, 50 offices. So talk to me about what sets J2 Global apart from the competition. How are you imagining or yeah. reimagining the industry? You know, so we're an internet company and I think we're somewhat unusual in the internet industry in that we're very driven by profit margins and profitable growth. We have a 40% plus EBITDA margin. We convert uh, a little over 70% of our EBITDA into free cash flow. So in that sense, we're driven by traditional metrics of success. And so that, and that I think uh, puts us in some contrast to other internet companies. I think the other thing I'd add is that from a business model innovation point of view, we've done a lot of interesting things around finding new ways to monetize content and audiences. You know, a great example of that is we own um, an asset called Ookla, which operates an app called Speed Test. And Speed Test is installed on 300 million devices worldwide. Phones, and it's got desktop usage as well, and smart TV, et cetera. And so when we acquired the asset, it was an advertising-based business, free to use, still is free to use, and still runs advertising. But what we built into it is a data as a service subscription business, a DAS business, which, you know, not a lot of media companies are creating DAS uh, enterprise level data and insight and business analytics type businesses. And so our ability to identify ways in which we can monetize uh, our assets and, and, and our audiences and our brands, I think also sets us apart. Absolutely, so you already spoke to us a little bit about your metrics of success. Do you have any other perhaps not so obvious metrics of success within the office? You know, so one of the, um, I think one of the key differentiators for J2 is that we are an active acquirer of other businesses. Mm -hmm. So in our history, 20 years as a public company, we've acquired 176 companies. We've deployed two and a half billion dollars of capital. So the J2 acquisition system, which is our ability to identify, to vet, to diligence, to transact, and then to integrate these assets into our company to create value, that's a key differentiator, it's a key creator of shareholder value. It's been reliable, it's been sustainable. We're not only celebrating 20 years as a public company, but it's 20 consecutive years of revenue growth, which I don't think, uh, not every company can say that at, at least. So in that context, given how much capital deploy deployment and allocation matter to us, uh, the metric we think often about is return on invested capital. Mm -hmm. And a simple way that we look at it, and there are a number of different ways to look at returns, um, we take total deployed capital, uh, in this case two and a half billion dollars, divided by our annual adjusted EBITDA, and we get to about 5.2 times. And so for us, that's around where we want to be. We want to be in the five times range in terms of our ability to deploy capital and get returns. So it's, it's not, it's, it's, it's a unique metric in the sense that, you know, we're very focused uh, as a company on serial acquisition, active acquiring, but it's a key metric for us. Absolutely, so not only focused on the revenue and consistent, having that consistency there, but also return on investment, super Absolutely. important. So clearly J2 Global is a very successful company. For those looking to get in this particular kind of industry, what kind of advice would you give to the next generation of people entering a very exciting, yeah. very volatile media field? 
You know, I think um, it's never been easier or better to be a learner. The ability to learn well past uh, whatever schooling you've had is unprecedented. The access to information, digital information, we've talked about podcasts, it's, it's extraordinary. If you need an answer to something or you're unsure about something or you want to learn or you want to recognize patterns, it's all there at your fingertips. And it hasn't always been that way. And so I do encourage folks at all levels of their careers to, to continue to learn and to take advantage of the digital tools that are out there. On the flip of that is, while we obviously embrace technology, we're a technology company and we sell technology services and internet services, not forgetting to forge personal connections. You know, I'm, I'm surprised at how many relationships are purely digital relationships and, and are not analog relationships, and they matter. All of the businesses um, that are listed on, on the NASDAQ stock market consist of people who are doing things um, and working with other people and being able to, uh, to make sure you've developed those skills, I think is very important in this job climate. Good piece of advice. And now for those looking to get to know you a little bit more personally in the office, what's your favorite piece of technology? All right, so I've got, it's a very <laughs> unexciting answer, but I love my Bluetooth headset. Okay. I do a lot of calls. And so, yes, we do, you know, we do video conferences, but I like to do conference calls and it just allows me to walk around. It allows me to stand up, um, pace around the office, pace around my own uh, workspace. So I love it. Um, and it's a simple piece of technology. It's very cheap and it works all the time. Duly noted. I like that. Cheap and works all the time. Exactly. All right, Vivek, thank you so much for joining us again. Thank you. Congratulations on the success of the company and on your 20 year listing anniversary with us. I appreciate us. it. Thank you. Thank you. NASDAQ followers, thank you for joining us on another episode of Behind the Bell. Stay tuned for more coverage coming to you right here live from the NASDAQ market site.